Testing a video game is a thorough, methodical process that ensures the game is not only fun and engaging, but also stable, functional, and polished for players. Quality Assurance, or QA, plays a pivotal role in this journey, working closely with developers from early concepts to post-launch updates. Let's take a detailed, step-by-step -step look at how video games are tested, and then explore how QA fits into the broader video game development lifecycle. The journey begins before a single line of code is written. QA testers start by immersing themselves in the vision for the game. They study the Game Design Document, or GDD, which is the blueprint for the entire project. This document lays out the rules, objectives, levels, character abilities, controls, and the intended user experience. Testers also review storyboards and feature lists to understand not just how the game works, but why it works that way. This deep understanding is crucial because it forms the foundation for all future testing. If you don't know what the game is supposed to do, you can't possibly know if it's doing it right. Once testers fully grasp the game's design, they move to the planning stage. Here, they create a comprehensive test plan. This plan is essentially a checklist that covers every feature, level, menu, animation, and mechanic the game will offer. It defines what constitutes a pass or fail for each element. For example, does the character jump when you press the jump button? Does the game save your progress correctly? The plan also prioritizes which features are most critical. Core gameplay like movement, combat, and saving usually take precedence over secondary features like cosmetic options or the credits screen. A well-structured test plan ensures nothing is overlooked and that the most important features receive the most attention. With the test plan in place, the next step is to set up the test environment. This involves installing the latest game builds and any necessary development kits, especially if the game is being developed for consoles like PlayStation, Xbox, or Nintendo Switch. For multiplayer games, testers might need to create special test accounts to simulate different player experiences. They also set up bug tracking tools such as Jira, Trello, or Bugzilla, which are essential for documenting and managing issues. Sometimes, specialized hardware is needed, such as tools to check frame rates or to emulate different network conditions. The goal is to recreate the environments where real players will experience the game, ensuring that no technical variable is left untested. Now comes the hands-on part, manual playtesting. Testers play the game in every imaginable way, not just as intended, but also in ways that might break the game. This includes playing normally, but also trying to go the wrong way, doing things out of order, or triggering edge cases that might not have been anticipated. They focus on several key areas. Functionality testing checks if every button, menu, and mechanic works as designed. Performance testing looks for issues like lag, stuttering, or crashes. Graphics and audio testing ensure that textures load correctly, lighting looks right, and sound effects play as they should. User interface testing checks that menus, HUD elements, and tutorials are clear and responsive. Multiplayer and networking testing ensures that players can join games, stay connected, and interact with each other without issues. This exhaustive approach helps uncover bugs that could otherwise slip through the cracks. Whenever a tester finds a bug, they document it thoroughly. A good bug report includes a detailed description of what went wrong, step-by-step -step instructions for reproducing the issue, a severity rating, such as critical, major, minor, or cosmetic, and supporting evidence like screenshots or video recordings. It also notes the specific build version where the bug was found. This level of detail is vital because it allows developers to understand, recreate, and fix the issue efficiently. After developers address the reported bugs, it's time for regression testing. This means testers revisit the parts of the game that were fixed to confirm that the bugs are truly resolved. Importantly, they also check to make sure that the fixes haven't inadvertently broken other parts of the game, a phenomenon known as breaking the build. Regression testing is an ongoing process, repeated every time new fixes or features are implemented. Compatibility testing is another crucial step. Modern games are played on a wide variety of devices, from high-end gaming PCs to older consoles and mobile phones. 
testers check the game on different hardware setups, screen resolutions, and operating systems to ensure it runs smoothly everywhere. For console games, this might mean testing on PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. For PC games, it involves checking both low-end and high-end systems. For mobile games, testers try out different devices, screen sizes, and operating system versions. The goal is to catch platform-specific bugs and ensure a consistent experience for all players. Stress testing takes things to the extreme. Testers deliberately overload the game, spawning hundreds or even thousands of enemies, for example, to see how the game handles intense situations. They might also simulate heavy network traffic, such as thousands of players joining and leaving a multiplayer match rapidly. Stress testing helps identify performance bottlenecks and stability issues that might not appear during normal gameplay. For console games, there's an additional layer of scrutiny. Compliance testing. Each platform, whether PlayStation, Xbox, or Nintendo, has strict technical requirements that games must meet. These might include rules about how menus work, how saving and loading are handled, or how warnings and notifications are displayed. QA testers ensure that the game complies with these requirements, which are often referred to as TRCs, XRPs, or LaCheks, depending on the platform. Failing compliance can delay a game's release, so this step is taken very seriously. Finally, before the game is released, it undergoes a final QA pass, sometimes called Gold Master Testing. Testers play through the entire game from beginning to end without using any cheats or debugging tools. The goal is to ensure that there are no critical bugs left and that the game is truly ready for players. Only when the game passes this rigorous final check is it marked as gold, meaning it's ready for release. Now let's zoom out and see how QA fits into the bigger picture. The Video Game Development Life Cycle the life cycle begins with the concept or pre-production stage. Here, QA's involvement is minimal, but sometimes testers are brought in to provide feedback on early prototypes or proof-of-concept builds. Their input can help identify potential issues before full development begins. As the project moves into production, QA starts to play a more active role. Testers begin working with early versions of the game, often called alpha builds. At this stage, the focus is on core gameplay mechanics, making sure that movement, combat, and other foundational systems function as intended. Bugs are expected, and the goal is to catch them early before they become deeply embedded in the game. When the game reaches the alpha stage, heavy bug finding begins in earnest. Testers play the game daily, submitting detailed bug reports and working closely with developers to address issues. The game is mostly playable at this point, but still rough around the edges. QA's job is to identify as many problems as possible, from game-breaking crashes to minor graphical glitches. Once the game is feature complete, it enters the beta stage. Here, the focus of QA expands to include performance testing, user interface, and user experience, UI, UX, checks, graphics, and sound. Testers look for polish issues, anything that might detract from the player's enjoyment. They also start testing the game in a wider variety of environments, simulating the conditions real players will encounter. As the game approaches release, it enters the release candidate phase. This is the final stretch where QA conducts one last round of regression, performance, and compliance tests. The goal is to ensure that all major issues have been resolved and that the game meets the technical requirements of each platform. Any remaining bugs are typically minor and unlikely to impact the overall experience. But QA's job doesn't end when the game is released. In the post-launch phase, testers continue to play a vital role. They test patches, downloadable content, DLC, D LC, and live updates, ensuring that new content doesn't introduce new bugs or break existing features. In today's era of live service games, Ongoing QA is more important than ever. To put it simply, QA is a continuous loop that starts early and intensifies as the game nears completion. Testers play, find bugs, report them, developers fix them, and then testers retest to confirm the fixes. This cycle repeats until the game is stable 
polished, and ready for players. Final testing ensures that the release version of the game is stable across all systems and meets the standards of platform holders. Without QA, games would be riddled with bugs, crashes, and inconsistencies, leading to frustrated players and damaged reputations. By following a structured, step-by-step -step process, QA teams help bring the creative visions of game developers to life. Delivering experiences that are not only enjoyable, but also reliable and polished for millions of players around the world.